Hi, my name's Rich. I'm the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun Foundation field geologist, and I'm here today making this video inside the Ravna 3 tunnels to present to you a compilation of videos that I made for my official YouTube channel, Forgotten Pyramids. Now, when I first came to the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids 10 years ago, I was making a few casual videos just for my own personal enjoyment. And these videos were getting 10,000, 20,000, as many as 120,000 views per video. Uh, and now, fast forward 10 years, I have more information to share about what is happening here in the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids. And the, view, uh, the videos that I'm making now, I'd be lucky to get a few hundred views. Now, this isn't because uh, the information I'm sharing has got worse than 10 years ago. In fact, it's got better. Um, and it isn't because people are no longer interested in the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids. If you're watching this, I'm sure you are aware that Google and YouTube and other mainstream institutions have been trying to clamp down on certain information being spread across the internet. And so because the official Foundation YouTube channel has got a great many number of subscribers, I hope that by introducing myself here on this video channel, you will be inclined to perhaps come and join me on Forgotten Pyramids and help that channel grow. Because the information that I'm putting out will get put out there first. Anyway, take a look at this compilation. I hope you enjoy it and I will see you in the next video. Ciao. Hi, my name's Rich, I'm the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun Foundation Field Geologist and welcome to another episode on Forgotten Pyramids. If you like these kinds of videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe. So today I'm back inside filming within the Ravna tunnels and in this video I'm going to discuss with you a significant dominating archaeological feature seen throughout the Ravna tunnels complex. Stay tuned because later in this video I will also show you our very latest archaeological discovery found only last week here within the Ravna tunnels. So throughout the Ravna tunnels we find many man-made structures, namely the drywalls. Now these are seemingly simple in construction, composed of rounded riverbed cobbles, and they adhere to building principles that are seen in drywalls all around the world and throughout time. Let me go and show you. So here is an example of one of the larger drywalls within the Ravna tunnels. And you can see behind it is a large now partially emptied passage and there is the loose backfill geological rubble. So looking at the construction just like many drywalls we find around the world we have here an anchor stone actually we have two anchor stones these are some rather large boulders in fact these are probably some of the largest uh, clasts in any drywall within the Ravna tunnels about halfway up we see here we have a tabular slab this is a tie stone so several cobbles are resting upon it this gives it some st structural integrity there's another tabular slab there and one right in the middle so you see there's some degree of symmetry you'll also notice that there are no horizontal sorry no vertical joints and this speaks to the drywall constructors proficiency because any drywall that has vertical joints that will obviously weaken the structure the best drywalls are those with absolutely zero vertical joints so a very nice drywall here So this drywall, it's only a little one, maybe a metre and a half across, it is completely unique within the Ravna Tunnels complex. You can see that there's a small infill passage behind it, but the convex nature of this drywall is not seen in any other wall. It's extremely rounded. You can see that there isn't a flat face on it, apart from absolute center you see that there is 
one flat face slab exactly in the center. And this particular feature isn't unique. We actually found this also on one of the most recently discovered drywalls within the Ravna 4 tunnels. And I'll just uh, insert a picture of that. So yeah, very rounded. All drywalls within the Ravna tunnels are single stack. That means they're only one layer of stone thick. And most do have a small angle from vertical called the batter of a few degrees, four degrees, five degrees at the most. So this drywall here is also one of the larger ones. We see a big side tunnel partially infilled, almost completely infilled in fact. But uh, what's interesting about this drywall is the central design. So you can see that they've chosen particular flat face tabular slabs, two stacked upon each other in the centre and then one to the side, one to the other side. So there is some degree of symmetry in the choice of placement of these slabs. Now what's even more interesting is the lower slab has a concave face, whereas the one above has a convex face. Interesting. So were they just playing or is there actually some significance to this design? Now another interesting feature which is missing on this side unfortunately because this side is degraded but we do have another clast on the other side and this was once symmetrical so the clast I will show you on this side there was another one existing on this side and if I just come here it's this one here they actually chose this square shaped block and placed it at the edge based on its surface texture so unlike any of the other stones in the drywall for some reason this stone condenses water on its surface and it has a damp wet sheen none of the other dry stone wall cobbles have that phenomena and they actually had exactly similar sort of stone doing the exact same thing with the water on the opposite side so again symmetrical unfortunately we've now lost that stone although if I do have a picture of it I will roll it in now some of the most impressive drywalls in the Ravna tunnel complex exist in what we call the water section. These are tunnels that are channelized and collect large amounts of water. So in front of me is a very special drywall. If I just take the night vision off, maybe you can appreciate that there is a use of color they actually use different colored clasts within the drywall. So quite a rare stone actually within the Ravna conglomerate there. You have a polished basalt right in its center. And then you can vaguely see that there is some use of lighter stones creating a cross. You have one there, one there, one on the left and one on the right. And you can see behind it there is an infilled passage. But if I just crawl in here now and we can look some really huge drywalls so I just turned the uh, night vision mode on the camera so you can see that there are side tunnels the length of this passage on both sides of the water channel and they go all the way to the top of the passage So these are some of the more impressive drywalls within the Ravna tunnels and it's unfortunate that we don't often get to see them because of their relative inaccessibility compared to the other drywalls in the Ravna tunnels complex.
So here's just a, a quick look at some of the drywalls in the water section. So this is one of the more impressive drywalls within the Ravna tunnels. Behind it is a very tall infilled passage, actually going almost above three meters in height. Also, there is some interesting design features within the wall itself. You can see symmetrically two tabular slabs, tie stones, with several smaller cobbles above them, and another flat-faced slab in the center. What's also interesting is the choice in colour of the cobbles used. So you can't really see it due to the lighting condition on the video, but I will insert a photograph and you can see that they use some cobbles that are lighter in colour. One, two, three, four, forming a cross in the centre. So that's quite interesting. Was that just to pass the time or does it have a symbolic significance of something existing beyond the wall? So this drywall here is representative of most of the drywalls within the Ravna Tunnels complex no particular standout features, just serving a purely practical function of retaining the infill loose rubble behind it. However this drywall does have some significance to me at least because this was the first drywall I actually excavated back in 2010 and there was a lot of discussion as to whether Dr. Sam was digging the tunnels himself and creating the drywalls uh, back then in those days. And when I saw this drywall coming out of the loose material that we'd been excavating for the last, I don't know, week or so, obviously it was impossible for Dr. Sam to have built that tunnel, replaced the fill material and then let us reveal the drywall so yeah that was that was an interesting moment for me to see this particular drywall being revealed so what is the purpose of the Ravna tunnel drywalls well at least two practical functionalities come to mind when we look at the drywalls number one it acts as a retaining wall so most passages we find within the Ravna Tunnels network has been backfilled with loose unconsolidated geological rubble. And when one of those tunnels had been infilled, a drywall is built, retaining that loose rubble, holding it in place and stopping it from slumping out into the other passages. The second purpose is as a marker. So every drywall occurs where two or more passages meet. And when we are excavating this loose rubble material, when we find a drywall along the wall of the passage, we know that there must be another passageway behind it. Okay, so now that we've had a look and a little discussion about the drywalls within the Ravenous Tunnels complex, let me go and show you our latest discovery, found last week in the Ravna 3 tunnels. So in a previous video, um, we did briefly discuss the drywall that we dis the two drywalls that we discovered in 2018, 2019 in the Ravna 3 tunnels. Well, today, in 2020, <coughs> a few meters deeper, you can see the infilled side tunnel behind the drywall. With the help of just a couple of volunteers in the disastrous 2020 excavation season, 
for reasons we shall not mention. We have found a second drywall with another infill tunnel behind it. Now, obviously this drywall doesn't look like much right now. We need to clear the loose rubble around it. But this is how a drywall looks upon its initial discovery. And then we clear away the loose rubble and uh, reveal the drywall in all of its beauty. So as this excavation continues, I will film some more footage to show you the progress of how a drywall is revealed from the loose rubble material that fills the passages in the Ravna Tunnels complex. So this is approximately 24 hours from the last time I filmed the drywall. You can see it's now more well defined after brushing and gentle cleaning around the clasts. Now this is actually a completely unique drywall in the Ravna Tunnels complex. Uh, I've not seen a drywall quite like this so far since the excavations began in 2005 because, oh, let me just place the light, because incorporated into this drywall you can see here is a couple clasts of the consolidated conglomerate that's fallen from the ceiling so there must have been some material that fell when they were digging these tunnels and then or when they were filling the tunnels up and then they placed that hard rock conglomerate as part of the wall because here we have a huge block of that consolidated conglomerate just in front of this section of drywall but then another drywall and the fact that there's consolidated pieces incorporated into this drywall suggests to me that the wall wasn't there and then there was a collapse but rather there was a big block that collapsed and then rather than moving it they incorporated it into the drywall you'll also see that this section of the drywall here is set forward more than this section which is set back and you can see the partially infilled tunnel behind it I'll just show you this section. So a lovely drywall there. Big block of consolidated conglomerate, about a meter, meter and a half, and then more drywall. So if this is one drywall with one huge clast, it's the largest drywall we've found in the Ravna 3 tunnels or we could call it two small drywalls with a big boulder placed between them. So I hope you enjoyed this video and the look at the Ravna Tunnels complex and the drywalls found within them. If you like these kinds of videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It will really help me to grow this channel. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao. Hi, my name's Rich, I'm the Foundation Field Geologist and I'm here today filming outside the entrance of the Ravna 3 tunnels. So the Ravna 3 tunnels, they're a relatively new discovery for the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun Foundation. Uh, they were discovered in summer of 2018 uh, with the help of uh, our team of international volunteers. Um, we were trying to find the lateral sort of extent of the Ravna Tunnel complex. Uh, in between the Ravna Tunnels and the Ravna 3 Tunnels is a small north-south trending valley and there was a discussion as to whether or not the tunnels were so old that perhaps those tunnels existed prior to the incision of that valley and if that was the case then we would surely find tunnels on both sides of the valley. 
You see the Ravna conglomerate is horizontally bedded, so we would expect to find tunnels at the same elevation on both the east and west sides of that valley. So in summer of 2018, we set to find the conglomerate, any exposures on the western side of the valley. And sure enough, we found a few little uh, outcrops and they displayed some holes under, underneath them with cold air blowing out from them. So this indicates that there must be uh, a hollow space allowing air to circulate deeper within the deposit. So the volunteers set to work excavating and it was about three or four weeks uh, before we gained entry into the Ravna 3 tunnels and uh, we found open space. They were not blocked up like the rest of the Ravna tunnel network usually is found. And in summer of 2019 uh, we actually started to recover artifacts from the raised floor within those tunnels. Uh, now this was very significant. In fact, the Ravna 3 tunnels represent one of the most significant milestones in the Bosnian Pyramid project because for the first time it was undeniable that uh, we're dealing with uh, something that is historical. You know, critics and skeptics of Dr. Sam and the Pyramid Hypothesis have proposed that uh, he's been digging the tunnels himself. So finding these artifacts was a significant um, development for the project. So let me just take you inside the Ravna 3 tunnels to show you exactly where those artifacts were recovered and then I will actually show you some of those artifacts we have on exhibition here in the Ravna 2 park. Now underground at the entrance of the Ravna 3 tunnels and where I'm working now was excavated by uh, myself and the volunteers in 2018. When we reached to this point here, we could see that the rest of the tunnel network was open. There was no blocking material. So when we found this empty space, we were very excited. Let me just take you in here. Okay, so this first chamber that I find myself in was where we found most of the artifacts. So the floor of this passage uh, chamber, I should say, was raised between 30 to 40 centimeters above the clay floor, which I will show you in just a moment. And as I say, we found over 3000 artifacts within this section of the tunnels. So this area of the tunnel network had been utilized uh, from Bosnian medieval period, Bosnian Roman period, and the local museum has done some analysis on pottery and has suggested there is even Neolithic pottery uh, amongst the finds. So let me just uh, change camera angles and give you a better look. Okay, so this here is the clay floor I've been talking about. And here is the conglomerate. So you can see the contact boundary between the two rock units. Now you'll also notice perhaps that the clay is not horizontally bedded, but the conglomerate is. So what we have here in geological terms is an angular unconformity. Which also tells us that uh, these are not part of the same depositional sequence, which the geological maps of this area insist are. So here we have an example of how we were excavating the raised floor of the Ravna 3 tunnels. This is a one meter by one meter square excavation. You can see here, this is the raised floor this is about 30 centimeters here. So this was full of the artifacts that we were pulling out. And it took us all summer to actually clear all of this floor space. I'll take you to exactly where the artifacts started to cease being recovered. So here we have a, a long straight section of tunnels. This is heading in a westerly direction, so deeper within the hillside. And when we got to about this point here, the finds started to stop. Now, up until this point here, we didn't categorically know whether these tunnels were associated 
with the original Ravna tunnels. I mean, it could be just that there are two separate tunnels built at different time periods. I mean, what evidence connected the Ravna tunnels with the Ravna 3 tunnels? Well, what we found at the end of the excavation season in 2019 confirmed their connection. And here we see one of the drywalls. So we have at least 50 drywalls within the Ravna tunnels and this was the second one we found within the Ravna 3 tunnels. There is one here which we reburied to protect it, it was quite small. Here's a little picture of it as an example. But I will do further video on the significance of drywalls themselves because they do deserve a video of their own. But to just briefly discuss here, we find drywalls where there is a meeting point between two tunnel sections. So you see that this tunnel section heads west, but we also see here, you can see that there is a partially infilled tunnel behind the drywall heading in a northerly direction. So we always find drywalls at tunnel junction points. So here this drywall marks the junction point between this section of tunnels where we found no artifacts and this section of tunnels where we did find artifacts. So Roman period, medieval period, it seems as though they were not utilizing this section of the tunnels. They stopped at around about this point here. And we'll discuss why that may be the case again in a further video. Okay, so this is just a quick look inside the Ravna 3 tunnels. Now let's go outside and I will show you the artifacts themselves. So right now we are looking at a partially reconstructed Roman terraciculata pot. This is high quality luxury ceramic ware. Again, this is from the Bosnian Roman period. Next to it, the single piece of jewellery we found within the Ravna 3 tunnels. This is a small pendant connector, approximately one and a half centimetres across, composed of bronze. Here is an enlarged photograph, so you can see the sort of motif on the connector, which has been suggested is Celtic in its abstract design. So again, part of the Bosnian Roman Celtic period. Next to it, we have something quite unusual to be found underground. We have a Roman roof tile, so a Roman tegular roof tile. Again, we find another Celtic motif on that Roman roof tile. So manufacturers of tiles would put their own individual identifying motif on the underside as to, so to be protected from weather. So that's two Celtic motifs found within the Ravna 3 tunnels. Here we have some more metallic artifacts we found in the Ravna 3 tunnels. We have a bronze belt buckle, some ferrous material here, maybe a blade of some sort, handmade nails, and what look to be small bronze coins, although they are heavily corroded, so we are not able to identify any uh, sort of design upon them, dates for example, so they would need further analysis. If I just cross the exhibition, now we come to the Bosnian medieval pottery. Here we have several rims of pots. You can see very simple design, just parallel lines. These would have been domestic ceramics. Here's different types. You can see the difference in quality between these fragments. So within the Ravna 3 tunnels, we were able to recover over 3,000 individual fragments of pottery. So very rich. In fact, we found more uh, pottery within uh, the Ravna 3 tunnels than anywhere else since uh, the Bosnian Pyramid project began. A 
few more fragments here again, simple ornamentation from the medieval period. And over here we have a nearly complete reconstruction of one of those medieval pots. This was reconstructed by uh, several volunteers from 2019. They did a really good job. So thank you to them. Here is another pot. So that's the rim, the base is missing. We find it upside down. So the existence of these artifacts within the Ravna Three tunnels once again disproves the conjecture made by skeptics and critics of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun Foundation and the Pyramid Hypothesis. Uh, the notion that Dr. Sam has created uh, these tunnels himself, or perhaps it was former Yugoslavian army digging those tunnels, these artifacts categorically disprove that conjecture. We have several different historic periods represented by their artifacts inside the Ravna tunnels. So this means that those tunnels have been in use through historic time and probably beyond that, but that is uh, a discussion for a further video in the future. So I hoped you enjoyed that brief look inside the Ravna Three tunnels, the artifacts we recovered from there, and the explanation as to why the Ravna Three tunnels are a significant step forward for the Bosnian Pyramid project. Um, after this discovery was made, uh, the local museum, which has been mostly um, unsupportive of Dr. Sam's efforts, uh, we now have a relationship with them, we are cooperating with them uh, on this project and on future projects. For example, the Ravna 4 discovery, which was made most recently, uh, we will discuss that in a future video. So, little steps forward, but significant steps forward. Um, so yeah, I will be making more videos um, in the upcoming weeks uh, here in the Ravna Tunnel Complex, but also on the pyramids themselves. If anyone has any suggestions or questions uh, regarding the Bosnian pyramids and the project here, please leave a comment below, uh, share this video, I'd be very grateful. Um, have a good day and I hope to see you one day. Ciao. Hi, my name's Rich, I'm the Foundation Field Geologist and I'm back inside the Ravna Tunnels underground within the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids. So, uh, in the previous video we discussed the hypothesis that the Ravna Tunnels were nothing more than a mine and how the evidence uh, here pointed to the fact that this was an implausible hypothesis. There is just no evidence to support that conjecture. And we also discussed uh, that perhaps the technological purpose then for the Ravna tunnels in relation to the nearby Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. And in doing so, we brought up the subjects of negative ions and uh, voltage traveling through the ground. So let me just go into a bit more detail there. So negative ions, we do measure elevated levels of negative ions within the Ravna tunnels. Uh, negative ions are produced via something called the Leonard effect and this is where water molecules get agitated and they lose electrons and those electrons are absorbed by the oxygen atoms within the atmosphere and thus become negatively charged, why we call them negative ions. So nature produces negative ions in many number of different settings, uh, white water rivers, uh, waterfalls are a famous example. And uh, so here within the Ravna tunnels, we do also have plenty of water that is being agitated, not on the scale of a waterfall, I might add. But you consider the rock behind me, the conglomerate, it's full of pores. So this rock is very porous and um, it has a high porosity, essentially, and permeable. So water is able to go through this rock with relative ease. And as the water is trickling through the rock, you've got lots of different clasts, different sizes, shapes. That water is getting agitated. And then when it comes to the tunnel wall, for the ceiling or the wall, for example, and drips down, when that water drops onto the floor, similar to a waterfall just on a lower level, 
agitates the water molecule, loses an electron, and the oxygen inside the tunnels absorbs those electrons, thus the negative ions. So rivers, uh, in a similar way, the only difference being in a river, it's an open system, it's uh, accessible to the atmosphere, there's lots of wind currents, so those negative ions diffuse through the atmosphere. Whereas in the Ravna tunnels, it's a closed system, those negative ions are able to build up in concentration. And that's when we do our measurements, we find uh, elevated levels inside the tunnels as compared to outside. So why would negative ions have anything to do with a pyramid? Well, again, as I mentioned in the previous video, if you believe uh, the pyramids are nothing more than tombs, uh, you will be now accusing me of discussing pseudoscience, and that's, that's fair enough. But uh, if you're open to the concept that pyramids are a technology, that they're a machine of sorts, um, then perhaps negative ions will have a purpose in that system. So what is the system, the electrical system of the pyramid? Well, also as I mentioned, flowing water produces a voltage. Okay, so there's many different ways in which voltages uh, are created within the earth and of course the earth is conductive. Everything has a conductivity value. Uh, rocks do have conductivity values. Now obviously it's relatively low uh, compared to say a copper wire in uh, household electrical circuitry but when we're talking on a huge earth scale uh, the rocks have different relative electroconductivity values so the highest conductivity values of sedimentary rocks for example would be clays and we just so happen to find that beneath the conglomerate, uh, and the f which it forms the floor of the tunnels, are thick clay layers. Uh, and in actual fact, a lot of these clays are blue clays. So why is it blue? Well, the iron content within the clay has been reduced. It's got extra electrons increasing the conductivity value further. The clays are also saturated with water. So if you wanted an electroconductive uh, geological material to build a pyramid upon, then you couldn't find any better, perhaps maybe a sulphide deposit. But again, we're in a sedimentary basin. There are no sulphide deposits. So this clay works exceptionally well f for a geological conductive material. On the opposite side, the, sediment, the conglomerate, which is above the clay layers, is a very poor conductor, so that has a relatively low conductivity value because it's full of pore spaces, as mentioned previously. It's full of rocks of different shapes, sizes, orientations, so it creates an insulator, geological insulator. So we're building up some semblance of a circuit here. And when we go over to the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, two and a half kilometers away, the base of that pyramid is stacked on very thick layers of pure blue clay. It's like a plug of conductivity underneath it. So if the idea that the pyramid is an energy machine utilizing naturally occurring earth currents, then yeah, you might want to place that pyramid on top of the material that we find the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun on. So why negative ions? What's the importance there? Well, when we look at the ground, the earth and the atmosphere, the atmosphere is positively charged and the ground is negatively charged. So positive to negative. Lightning travels from the sky, from positive, down to the earth, which is negative. And if you wanted to strengthen that circuit between the atmosphere and the ground you would want to increase the charge differential so the bigger the charge difference between the atmosphere and the ground the stronger that circuit would become so by filling the ground underneath the pyramid with negative ions you are increasing that charge differential you're making a stronger circuit between the pyramid itself which is connected to the ground negatively charged and the positively charged atmosphere so this is why the Ravna tunnels potentially are a cistern and why negative ions are indeed significant uh, within the Ravna tunnels. Okay, so that was uh, just uh, another short video. I will uh, try and make some videos above ground uh, in the coming days. If anyone has any suggestions uh, for topics to discuss, if you're interested in learning more about the Bosnian pyramids, leave a comment below and uh, thanks for your suggestions. I will try and answer your questions. Ciao. 
Hi, my name is Rich. I'm the Foundation Field Geologist, and I'm filming today uh, underground within the Ravna Tunnels network. And the reason for this video, I just want to touch on an area of contention regarding the true nature of these underground passages. So, critics against Dr. Sam's Bosnian Pyramid hypothesis have claimed that these tunnels are nothing more than the remnants of past mining activity. So is there any truth to this? Well, we know that 30 kilometers away in a town called Foynitsa that there were mines at least active since the Roman period and they were removing gold. And certainly there is no gold uh, within the rock unit that the Ravna tunnels cuts through. So let's just touch on uh, the rock itself here. So the Ravna tunnels are horizontal and they cut through uh, approximately horizontally bedded rock units called a conglomerate. So this conglomerate is composed of clasts of mixed size and composition. It's very poorly sorted. So we have a calcareous sand matrix that also contains clays and muds and uh, the clasts themselves go all the way from granules up to cobbles and boulders. And their composition, well the dominant clast here is sedimentary, so the most dominant is dollar stone. And we also find sandstones, limestones, mudstones. Uh, we also find metamorphic rocks, uh, schists, phyllites, the occasional gneiss. And the most uncommon rock type are igneous rocks. So we do find occasional basalt um, clasts, a few granites. But as I say, mostly sedimentary rock. So if there was to be any mineral of economic importance within this rock unit, it would make this rock what's known as a placer deposit. Okay, Which would mean that, for example, gold would be evenly distributed within the matrix of this conglomerate. And as this is a near surface deposit, the most efficient way of mining would probably be open cast mining. And you would just sieve through the poorly consolidated material. It's quite easy to do because you can just, um, as, let me just show here, you can dislodge the material by hand. So you would only need minimum effort, a spade, a pick and then a sieve and you could retrieve any gold within that matrix no problem at all. And you would start from the outside and move inwards through the deposit. You would not need to excavate an elaborate network of passages that cut through the rock in specific locations. That would be needless effort. And, you know, the definition of a mine is mining only takes place if you're removing minerals of economic importance. Well, as I've just stated regarding the composition of this rock unit, there is absolutely no mineral of economic importance within this conglomerate. Nothing at all. If you needed sand, if you needed limestone, dollar stone, for whatever purpose, you could retrieve that material um, in a much more simple manner than by digging many kilometers of passages that go through the rock in specific locations. So that is just touching on that controversy right then and there. It makes no sense to have a mine through this rock if there's actually nothing to mine. If you wanted a mundane explanation for these tunnels, it's much more likely to call it a cistern, so a way of collecting mobile groundwater and directing it to a certain place for whatever purpose. 
this makes more sense because we do find channelized tunnel sections that do collect the groundwater. Now this doesn't necessarily detract from the Bosnian Pyramid hypothesis because we know from uh, the Giza Plateau the passages there underneath the Great Pyramid of Giza were likely designed in a similar manner to collect groundwater. The motion of groundwater creates an electrical charge also mobile groundwater produces negative ions and uh, we are talking about a pyramid being a machine of sorts not as a tomb. So if you believe the pyramids are a tomb then the notion of a cistern being associated with the pyramids makes no sense but if you look at the pyramids as a passive electrical system designed to utilize naturally occurring ground currents then the idea of having a cistern to have collected groundwater, negative ions, motion of water producing a voltage etc etc then you know that makes sense so again anyone who claims that the Ravna tunnels are simply the remnants of a mine my question would be okay good idea what were they mining <laughs>